हेलो एंड वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर ईश्वर भट्ट आई रिटायर्ड एज यूनिवर्सिटी लाइब्रेरियन एट बिरला इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी एंड साइंस पिरानी राजस्थान प्रोवाइडिंग अट्रैक्टिव एंड फंक्शनल फिजिकल फैसिलिटीज इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज ऑफ लाइब्रेरी वर्क ऑल लाइब्रेरियंस नीड टू हैव नॉलेज अबाउट स्पेस प्लानिंग सम ऑफ एस will get the opportunity to plan a new library building itself in this lecture on space planning we will discuss the following aspects which i will uh, be giving the details one is functions of library building principles of planning library building location indian standards for library building dimensions for different rooms and facilities relative position of different areas compact shelving multi tier storage systems noise prevention weeding out air conditioning facilities for physically challenge and fire safeguards first let us consider what are the functions of library buildings a library building is expected to perform the following functions according to professor p n khawla the noted librarian one is effective technical operations of the library it has to provide space for all technical operations such as circulation periodicals binding it support technical processing reference service etc and then efficient and rapid production of information and material on demand provision of quiet comfortable and attractive spaces for study and then the provision of individual and collective study areas for the users doing intense reference work the provision of facilities for developing reading habit the provision to facilitate the contact of users with the contents of the library the storage and preservation of reading materials the accessibility of reading materials to users without any loss of time to the above mentioned functions i would like to add one that is accessibility of information using it infrastructure in the present day context now let us consider what are the main tenets or principles of planning library buildings the first of all the functional aspect of the library get a priority over the appearance and aesthetics aspects this is one important thing which any librarian has to keep note of often there is a tendency by the architects to give more importance to the aesthetic aspects no doubt aesthetics and beauty are important but certainly the functional aspects get a priority the librarian has to intervene and keep the architects well aware of what are all the functional aspects secondly the building should provide economy in administration and operations layout of different functional areas has to support efficiency then the study areas should be close to the active book collection adequate study area needs to be provided near the active book collection then the building should represent simplicity and user friendliness layout of different areas will have to be intuitive they have to be self explanatory future requirements in terms of functions stock and services given be given due consideration there has to be provision for expansion of the building if the need arises in future adequate provision has to be made for the physical conveniences of the staff staff conveniences such as toilets pantry lockers cafeteria etc are not to be overlooked then very important thing that is conveniences of physically challenged people should be reflected in the design of 
entrance doors, toilets, etcetera. Now, what background preparation is required before getting into the building project? What preliminary research is required? We will examine this next slide. Preliminary research much before the actual design starts, one important activity is to visit as many new library buildings as possible, which would give a better perspective. One can learn from the successes and failures of others by visiting recent library buildings. The librarian has to identify the right kind of libraries for the visits. During the visits, the librarian has to observe the various features, use of technology, experience of the users and experience of the staff too. The librarian has to specifically identify the pitfalls in other buildings, so that they are not repeated. The librarian has to meet the users and also meet the staff of the library and ask specific questions such as if you have to redesign this building altogether or if you have to remodel it, what changes you would like to see? This set of questions they will ask, then you will know what are the pitfalls in this building. Another way of conducting the research is by conducting a survey of the present users of the library in order to get their views on what features are required in the new li library building. A fo focus group meeting with the users will also be of help. Ask the users what they would like to see in the new building. Do they want to see more of computer cubicles? Do they want more of private reading areas? Do they want to see the library open for 24 hours? Do they want to have more of noisy area in the library? It is up to them. Let them come up, with, come up with the ideas. Later, you can evaluate the ideas and uh, incorporate that in the plan. Adequate consultation with the library staff needs to be made, since they are the people whose involvement is required for the success of the project. Location of the library has an impact on the usage and popularity. What is the ideal place for the location of library building? We will examine this in the next slide. Location of the library has to be as far as possible be central or most easily accessible to the largest number of users. If a hall is to be chosen for the library in a multi storied building, the ideal place will be the ground floor rather than the basement or the upper floors. In a university campus, which houses several buildings, the site which is near the academic blocks has to be chosen for the library rather than the one which is at the far end of the campus. For a city center library, a site right in the heart of the city is preferred rather than a site located in the city outskirts, though it may have scenic beauty around. This traditional thinking that the library has to be necessarily located in a quiet place conducive for study has to be discarded. On the other hand, the ideal place is one which attracts the maximum number of users. Often there is a tendency amongst the administrators to locate the library in a far off corner which might decrease readers footfall. Librarian needs to advise the administration against, against this tendency. In the next slide, we will examine the Indian standards which are available for the various facilities in the library building. Space requirements for different functional areas in the library can be worked out on the basis of the Indian standards, design of library buildings, recommendations relating to its primary elements, second revision IS 1553 1989. Originally, it had been brought out in 1960 by Indian Standard Institution. Now, it has been renamed as Bureau of Indian Standards and its original title was Code of Practice Relating to Primary Elements in Design of Library Building. IS 
1960. The original standard had been prepared by the sectional committee on library buildings, fittings and furniture under the chairmanship of professor S. R. Ranganathan. The standard was revised in 1976 and 1989. Though the standard was primarily meant for university and college libraries, a large number of its content can be used to other libraries too such as public libraries and special libraries. Let us see what these standards are. The first one is each floor of the library building has to be in a single level to facilitate the movement of book Ravi from one part to another. Thresholds should not be provided in any floor. The reason is simple, if there are thresholds it will hinder the movement of trolleys and also wheelchairs. The rooms shall be arranged in such a way that the staff other than those servicing the reading room shall not have to pass through the reading room, room disturbing the readers. Locate the room in such a way that they do not have to pass through the reading area. Let us say you are going to have a big hall and you want to accommodate an assistant librarian in that hall. So, locate his place in such a way that he does not have to pass through the reading area if he has to go to another office. So, preferably his room can be somewhere near the entrance so that he can move out easily without disturbing the readers. The third one is entrance to the library building and exit from it shall be only through the counter enclosure at the point of entrance. In other words, there has to be only one entrance this will help the security of the library. If there are too many entrance and exits, it will be difficult to control the entry exit points. Gangways are not only essential for efficient functioning of the library, but also to allow easy access or passage to firemen to various parts of a room or building. The minimum clear width of gangways shall be as follows. Longitudinal gangway that is from front to, to the back or the hall, it has to be 1 meter minimum. Cross gangway not less than 1.35 meters that is we are talking about the space between two rows of the shelves, it has to be minimum 1.35 meters. The end gangway that between the end wall and the nearest row of shelves that is not less than 1.325 meters. Other important recommendations of IS 1553-1989 each floor of the library building shall be at one single level to facilitate the movement of book trolley from one part to another. Each unit rack 2 meters long houses 700 to 750 volumes and one square meter of stack room area houses about 150 volumes. This will be useful for us to estimate the area required for a stack room. For instance, if you are planning for a stack room for 1 lakh volumes divide 1 lakh by 150 that gives you uh, how many square meters of shelving area is required. Center to center distance between consecutive racks is 1.80 meters and then the distance from one end of the stack room to the center of the nearest row of racks is 1.55 meters. The average area per reader in the reading room should be 2.33 square meters and the size of reading table is 2.4 meter into 0.6 meter. A standard recommends long tables wherein the readers are seated only on one side of the table. This avoids or prevents cross talking. So, it recommends that each table of 2.4 meters can accommodate three people comfortably. The center to center distance between two consecutive rows of reading tables is 1.8 meters. Though separate guidelines have not come out regarding present day CDs, one can assume that one running foot of CD can accommodate 25 CDs. Now, let us examine the other sizes for other rooms. The IS code recommends the librarian and deputy librarian for t square meters of space and for cataloger 
classifier, accession librarian and maintenance librarian, it recommends 9 square meters per person. And for secretary to the librarian, it is 9 square meters per person. And for visitors room, it is 15 square meters per person. And for administrative and professional staff not at service point and other than those mentioned above, it would be 5 square meters per person. For group discussion room, it would be 2 square meters per person that depends upon the number of people who are going to be accommodated in the group discussion room. Let us say if you are going to accommodate 20 people in a group discussion room, 20 into 2 it will be minimum 40 square meters. For a conference room, it recommends 2 square meters per person, for seminar room 2 square meters per person, for committee rooms 2 square meters per person and for cubicles it, it recommends 7 square meters per person. Now, what about the relative position of different functional areas? As I mentioned earlier, various functional areas have to be accommodated uh, in such a way that they promote maximum efficiency of work. For instance, near the entrance or exit gate, one can have clock rooms. In bigger libraries, it is advisable to have only one gate for entrance and one gate for exit, while in smaller libraries, they can, there can be only one gate for both entry and exit. Libraries should not have any additional entry or exit points. In the lobby area, you can have issue desk, reference and information desk, OPEC terminals, catalog cabinets, new book displays and notice boards. In the middle of the library, but away from the stack and reading areas, you can locate the librarian, deputy librarian, technical processing, clerical staff and computer server room, because these are areas wherein the, there is more knowledge, more noise is likely to be generated. That is why it recommends that these facilities will have to be a bit away from the stack and reading areas. In the middle of the library, but away from the stra library staff areas can accommodate stacks, periodical section, reserved book section, reading tables and carrels audio visual hall, photocopying, internet facilities, scanning etcetera. It is essential that the reading areas have to be near the stack areas. If they have to be provided in the stack itself, the reading tables may be provided near the windows in order to ensure natural light and air. At the far end of the library, you can locate the book repair and binding section. You can have digitization labs, cafeteria, discussion rooms, special collections, toilets, multipurpose halls for seminars, conferences, exhibitions, etcetera. There are some more recommendations of IS 1553-1989. It says internal noise generating generally of conversation, frictional noise such as chairs scrapling the floor and the impact of heels on hard floor and mechanical noises from book hoists and typewriters shall be controlled effectively. For instance, by using noise absorbing materials in ceiling, walls, floors and partitioning surfaces. All legs of movable furniture should be provided with rubber shoes. The book trolleys should be with rubber tires. It also says the maximum acceptable noise in a library should be 40 to 50 dB. The dB refers to the unit for measuring the noise level. For details of methods for achieving this noise reduction and sound insulation, reference should be made to IS 1950-96. So, that is one more IS regarding uh, the how to reduce the noise level. Provision for air conditioning to maintain uniform temperature of 22 plus or minus 1 degree Celsius and relative humidity at 50 plus or minus percent round the clock throughout the year 
for at least the storage space where the rare books, manuscripts and similar irreplaceable materials are stored shall be made. So, the IS code recommends air conditioning facility especially for the uh, rare books, manuscripts and similar irreplaceable materials. About the importance of air conditioning we will be covering in the later part of this lecture. For details of principles and practices governing good lighting for libraries, reference shall be made to IS 2672-1966, which also recommends the levels of illumination to be achieved by general principles of lighting. For day lighting, reference shall be made to IS 7942-1976. Now, let us examine are there any standards and specifications for IT applications? IS 1553-1989 does not provide guidelines for facilities required for IT applications such as computer terminals, Wi-Fi, server rooms, cabling, electrical points, etcetera, which are essential parts of modern libraries. Separate standards related to these applications are available and may be consulted by the library planning team. Many of our libraries have large stock of old books which are not frequently used, but occupy precious space. In the next three slides we will be discussing about how to handle these old books which occupy huge space. One solution is compact shelving. Printed books continue to grow in our libraries and the stack area soon gets filled up. In bigger libraries, compact shelving is used for less used books. Compact shelving is a shelving system that rides on movable carriages over floor installed walls. These rails mounted on concrete floor. Compact shelving is available both manually and electrically operated. There are safety devices which can stop the movement in case it makes contact with an object such as a book trolley or a human being. The main advantage of compact shelving is that it reduces the shelf space drastically by eliminating the aisles. Less used books and reading materials can be shelved in compact shelving. Also in some institutions where the library has to be used as a multi purpose hall too, such compact shelving is used. By moving the shelves to the aisles, a makeshift hall is quickly created for holding events. Another solution is multi-tier stack systems. Multi-tier stacks provide a storage solution for housing less used books. Shelving space can be increased by providing multiple tiers of shelves. These are steel shelving systems which are assembled as two or more tires of shelving sections in which the bottom shelving is a support for the upper level floor. In this system shelf uprights or columns and floor decks are self supporting. Each level of stack supports the level above. In this system the shelves cannot be moved easily that is the disadvantage of multi tire stack systems. Because of lack of flexibility, multi tire stack systems are less preferred than the freestanding modular bookshelves. Nevertheless, multi tire stacking systems can be used for storage of less used books. Another solution we adopt for the storing for the handling of old and rare books is weeding out and digitization. Weeding out is an important aspect of library work. Library needs to have a policy for weeding out reading materials, extra copies of rare books, real literature, outdated materials, mutilated volumes, old CDs, DVDs, floppies, etcetera need to be weeded out in order to make space for new editions. Second important aspect is digitization of old materials. In an electronic area, 
electronic errors of digitization of less used and old books helps in space saving provided the library complies with the copyright laws. Many libraries have digitized two old materials and built digital libraries. It is common to find own publications of the parent organization and thesis submitted to the universities being digitized and made available either through internet or for a wider public through internet. How do we control the noise in the library? Library has to be designed so as to provide a maximum noise proof area which is required for serious study. Prevention of noise can be done by increasing sound absorbing material and also by reducing sound reflecting surfaces in the library. Sound absorbing materials include fall ceiling, wall to wall carpeting for the floor, curtain for the windows, providing cork or rubber or linoleum covering for the floor etcetera. Concrete walls, floor, ceiling etcetera reflect the noise. Rooms such as offices, bindery, cafeteria etcetera be provided spring doors, so that the noise does not reach the reading areas. Book trolleys need to have rubber wheels, chairs and tables be provided rubber or cushion padded legs. Now, we come back to air conditioning, which is a very important requirement in any library. Air conditioning has become almost a necessity for libraries. Apart from providing a comfortable study area and increasing staff productivity, air conditioning prevents physical deterioration of reading materials. The famous American librarian Burchard mentioned that air conditioning in his strict in the strict sense may means simultaneous control of eight factors that is temperature, humidity, air motion, air distribution, dust, bacteria, odors and toxic gases. Air conditioning also produces a noise free environment. In the next slide, we will examine the facilities for physically challenged readers. It is necessary that the library provides facilities for the physically challenged persons to use the library. There has to be a ramp entrance in order to facilitate readers with wheelchair or walkers or crutches. None of the doors in the library should have thresholds since they hinder the movement of wheelchairs. Besides special toilets with wide door are to be provided so that a person with a wheelchair or walker can use them. If the reading materials are located in more than one floor, lifts are to be provided necessarily. What safeguards be there in the library building to meet fire hazards? We need to keep in mind that library contains reading materials which contain the legacy of the past. A major part of our book collection are irreplaceable and therefore, fire safeguards have to be kept in mind at the planning stage itself. The conduit electricity wiring plug socket points have to be of good quality. False ceiling materials if used are to be fireproof. Electric circuit breakers have to be made available in each hall of the library in order to cut off the supply in the event of electricity overload or fire. Adequate fire extinguishers have to be made available in all halls of the library and staff be trained to use them in emergency. In big libraries, fire sensors and hooters are installed in order to provide automatic warnings in the event of fire. Besides, there has to be an exclusive emergency exit gate for evacuation in case of emergency. Finally, let us examine the space requirements in electronic era. Because of readers migration to online reading, addition of print books is slowing down in our libraries. Besides, the footfalls and seat capacity in the library has been used less and less. Some implications for migration to electronic era are first of all providing IT infrastructure for accessing electronic information. 
it includes Wi-Fi, wired LAN, printers, scanners, etcetera. These have to have to be necessarily incorporated in the planning stage itself. Provide a large number of power sockets all over the library for using laptops. Provide small discussion rooms. Identify noisy areas in the library for allowing discussions. Providing specially designed carrels for accessing information. Acquire specially designed racks for storing, storing electronic objects such as CDs and DVDs. Install CCTV cameras, which have become effective tools for monitoring readers behavior. I notice there has been overall reduction in the staff work areas in the electronic era, because of downsizing of library staff as a result of automation. Now, we have been doing away with catalog cabinets and shelf lids, because these all have been replaced by online public access terminals. Finally, there is a reduction of stack area for reference tools such as encyclopedias, dictionaries etcetera, because these reference books are being replaced by online reference sources. Friends, in this uh, lecture on space planning, the aspects we covered were the location of the library building, functions of the library building, fire safeguards, facilities for the physically challenged, Indian standards available for library buildings and then uh, the implications of new technology on this planning of uh, physical facilities etcetera. Hope you found this lecture useful. For more detailed information on this subject, please read the e-text. Thank you very much.